Ukraine, in the limelight as a nation under siege, wants worldwide solidarity, yet the unspoken story is one of internal prejudice. Beyond the Russia-Ukraine war, a sad truth persists. Ukrainians display discrimination against black people. Amidst this, Ukraine is an unexpected hotspot for different students, particularly black students seeking education and new prospects. Join us as we unearth Ukraine's hidden side, not just a combat zone but a location where global minds collide and interact, resulting in a unique tale of struggles and ambitions and the racism against blacks in Ukraine that the media doesn't show you. Ukrainian universities are making global ripples, particularly in health and engineering. What is the secret sauce? Tuition rates are affordable, making Ukraine a popular destination for African students seeking higher education. Surprisingly, 20% of Ukrainian students are black, highlighting the country's attractiveness as a melting pot of educational prospects. But hold on to your hats because it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. While Ukraine may appear to be a country of dreams for black people looking for a better life, reality can be harsh. Beyond the crowded classrooms and bright employment market, there lies a shadow of racial prejudice, restricted career opportunities, and cultural isolation. As the world's attention is focused on the Russia-Ukraine conflict, increasing incidences of bigotry against black people are being ignored. This film reveals the unedited reality of what it means to be black on Ukraine's streets. To comprehend what it's like to be black in a community that yells about oppression from its neighbors, we must delve into the tales and experiences of individuals who live there. Terrell Starr, a New York-based professor, revealed the harsh reality of racism in Ukraine during a Cannon Institute event back in 2011. As he researched the experiences of African-Ukrainian women, Evangelina D's narrative struck a deep chord. A university student with Angolan and Ukrainian ancestry, she revealed that, despite holding a Ukrainian passport, she needed a social visa to be recognized as a legitimate citizen. Starr's investigation did not end with personal anecdotes. It revealed a harsh reality of deep-rooted racism and xenophobia in Ukraine. Fast forward to the present, and the problem still exists. Starr, an African-American, saw racial hostility firsthand, being stopped by Ukrainian police a staggering 29 times during his visit. The increasing tide of prejudice against black people in Ukraine is true, and even after the Russian invasion, Stories of discrimination at Ukraine's border began to circulate from day one. It's a harsh reality check. A decade later, prejudice persists, undermining the notion that Ukraine is all enlightened and immune to racism. This is a voyage that shows the brutal truth of racism against blacks in Ukraine that the media does not disclose. Imagine this. Kareem, a Zimbabwean student doctor, wakes up on February 24, 2022, to find Twitter booming with reports of Kiev being attacked. Panic sets in. Attempting to leave Dnipro on the same day results in a chaotic disaster. Insane lines, cash shortages, you name it. Undaunted, Koreen enters superhero mode, working all day, gathering supplies, and setting up telegram conversations for her African team. Poland supports Ukrainian refugees, but what about Africans? Finally, reassurances arrive. Everyone is welcome, passport or not. On February 25th, Romania, Hungary, and Slovakia join the welcoming celebration. Cut to Dnipro, where sirens sound, and Koren's group realizes it's now or never. A 10-hour trip becomes a 26-hour odyssey due to military roadblocks, vigilantes, and a perpetual fear of the unknown. Koren tweets about the chaos raises money for others trapped and gives resources. In Lviv, she arranges for lodging for her group and others they meet along the road. The roller coaster ride continues as six females from Zimbabwe, Eswatini, and South Africa share their experiences with prejudice in Dnipro. The conflict continues at the Ukrainian Polish border, with a 65 hour wait and increased racial discrimination. It's a story of perseverance and mayhem, with Corin serving as a total superhero in the midst of it all. What a crazy time! Kareen and her friends faced further difficulties as a result of their decision to support Romania over Poland, including prejudice along the Ukrainian-Romanian border. They were compelled to join a pedestrian line divided based on race and spent 10 hours in inclement weather without supplies. It took them three days to reach the front, 
but a disturbing twist was in store. The party was instructed to leave the automobile line and enter a pedestrian line reserved for black, Asian, and Arab individuals after experiencing prejudice and discrimination at the hands of Ukrainians. As Karine was recording the event, she was confronted by a terrifying guy who tried to jump on her. Remarkably, the soldiers at the frontier did not step in. Instead, they laughed. This obvious act of bigotry highlighted the ongoing difficulties that those escaping the violence encounter because of the color of their skin. Fortunately, Kareen and her other African visitors joined the queue with a group of Indian students who witnessed the unfair situation and showed support. Though the difficulties continued, this gesture of goodwill brought some temporary relief. Kareen found courage in the company of others going through similar struggles despite the severe weather, scarcity of supplies, and unyielding presence of soldiers policing the border. But after passing the last military barrier and passport control, we came to a depressing revelation. A glaring illustration of segregation was made evident as Indian families easily slipped through lines, highlighting the prejudice Kareen and her fellow passengers endured due to the color of their skin. Despite the difficulties, Kareen took comfort in the friendliness and kindness of the people when she arrived in Romania. Romania developed it into a sanctuary that exemplified what it is to be human. Her startling tale is only one of many that have occurred during the turbulent times that have followed Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Two friends, a 24-year-old economic student from Zambia and a 23-year-old medical student from Nigeria, named Jessica Orapko, had to make the difficult choice to flee their academic life in western Ukraine and seek refuge along the Polish border. Once a taxi ride, the trip became a march on foot with limited provisions. Another barrier they encountered was the Polish border, where racial prejudice was visible and confirmed the experiences of South Asian and African nationals of Ukraine. Africans, particularly those who were born and raised there, face a variety of difficulties that are not just related to the conflict in Ukraine. They stand for a structural issue deeply embedded in an international framework that perpetually pushes them to the bottom of the global hierarchy. This bias is ingrained in many facets of life and is most noticeable in migration, travel, and media coverage. Having an African passport usually means going through a lot of red tape, mostly related to visa requirements. Not only is the procedure expensive and time-consuming, but it is also risky. African citizens' visa applications are randomly selected, and the decision made may depend on the official's disposition on any given day. Africans frequently have to provide further evidence of their eligibility, show that they have extra money to spend when they arrive, and live in continual dread of being deported back to their native countries. Furthermore, those with passports from supposedly powerful nations easily obtain visas, allowing them to travel freely and with quick approvals. The glaring disparity in treatment that arises from the color of a person's passport accentuates the systemic injustices that continue to exist worldwide. Travel is just one of the many obstacles. Immigration presents another difficult problem. For Africans applying for visas or permanent residency in another nation, the intersection of geopolitics and bureaucracy results in a drawn-out and sometimes unnecessary procedure. While Westerners making comparable travels are hailed as expats, praised for their alleged hard-working mentality and discretionary cash, Africans are frequently branded as migrants, saddled with preconceptions of sloth and poverty. Africans still face opposition despite their best efforts to adapt to their new surroundings. People's enduring notion of difference coming just from skin color and race exacerbates the general resistance to accept them to their fullest extent. There is a double standard at play here because attempts at integration made by people from the West are often welcomed, while those from Africa are viewed with suspicion. Africans in the continent are consistently portrayed negatively in the media, particularly when it comes to refugees, which exacerbates the difficulties associated with immigration and visas. A false narrative that shapes opinions outside of the continent has unfairly painted Africa and its people as violent and impoverished throughout time. The negative representation of Africans in the media significantly influences views and policies, creating a climate in which Africans, especially those escaping conflict, face rejection and contempt while negotiating perilous circumstances. This striking discrepancy in media coverage 
heightens the emotional effect of sad occurrences. It frequently reinforces a narrative that is skewed toward victims and gives them relevance based only on their closeness to whiteness. This story perpetuates a troubling BS, one that is deeply embedded in the minds of many that determines tragedy according to the victim's closeness to whiteness. Racial differences already present are made worse by the media's perpetuation of the idea that catastrophes involving people with blue eyes and blonde hair are more significant. This prejudice permeates institutional actions as well as popular views, establishing a hierarchy of compassion based on racial and ethnic backgrounds. In this story, Africans who attempt to flee frequently encounter rejection, a painful reality they have dealt with for a long time. This difference in treatment, which is noticeable during humanitarian crises, is a sobering reminder of the pervasive structural racism that exists in our culture. It highlights the critical importance of confronting these prejudices and developing cross-cultural empathy and understanding, especially in times of crisis when everyone should be able to show compassion. Furthermore, it's important to note the racism against black people in Ukraine that the media does not show on media while the world turns its attention to the events taking place there. A fresh perspective on the story is provided by the stories shared by people such as Kareem, Jessica Oropko, and Maurice Creek, highlighting black people's difficulties during the struggle. These unseen tales highlight how vital it is to confront racial issues in the nation and push for a more equal and inclusive society that cherishes every person regardless of race. Unfortunately, systemic racism does not take a back seat at times of sorrow, conflict, or disaster. Rather, it tends to deepen. The structures designed to give assistance and refuge are intrinsically biased against Africans, highlighting a bigger problem that goes far beyond single incidences. In light of the present situation in Ukraine, it is critical to highlight the racism against blacks in Ukraine that the media does not show. This concealed part of the story is more prominent during humanitarian catastrophes, showing societal prejudices. Individuals like Kareem, Jessica Orapko, and Maurice Creek recounted their stories, shedding attention to the hardships encountered by black people throughout the war and underlining the critical need to address racial issues in the country. As the world's attention is focused on the developing events in Ukraine, it is critical to uncover the untold tales and work toward creating a more inclusive and equitable society that appreciates every individual, regardless of race. While the current situation in Ukraine has brought to light serious incidents of racism in the nation, it is important to remember that Ukraine has not always been regarded as a racist refuge. Historically, it has been regarded as a safe and economical educational destination, with a better degree of study and well-known institutions throughout Europe. Ukraine's attraction has traditionally been based on its reputation for delivering high-quality education at affordable prices. Many students, particularly those from Africa, have come to Ukrainian institutions for budgetary reasons and the prospect of a kind and accepting environment. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more awareness of black culture.